Okay, so before we get to the Omaha part, let's focus on what exactly is high-low, okay? High-low, eight or better, means that half the pot is gonna get awarded to the best high hand as normal, but the other half is gonna go to the five best low cards. The best five low cards you can have, ace counts as high or low, so in this case, so you got ace, two, three, four, five would be the best possible low. It's also a straight in this game, which would be very, very good. Now, in order to make a low, you have to match two cards from your hand and three from the board that are low. Uh, that in Omaha, of course, as you know, you have to use two from your hand and three from the board at all times. Uh, you can use any two for high, you can use any two for low. So you could use, for example, the ace king for the high, the deuce five for the low, and you know, make two way hands that way. Now, for those of you that never played high low, like obviously you want the five lowest cards, but ace, ace, deuce, deuce, three doesn't count. You have to have five different cards and they have to be eight or lower. So um, if you have a really strong low hand, but the board doesn't have three low cards, it's impossible for you to have a low. So anytime you see a board that comes king, queen, jack, king, jack, nine, four, three, no low is possible. It's gonna be a one-way pot, only high. Now, the way the betting works, same as limit hold'em. You got small blind, big blind, first player, you know, raises. So for example, if you're playing 20, 40 limit, the first raise would be to 40 bucks and you bet in increments of $20. Betting completes before the flop. Now you have a flop just like any other game. There's another bet, small bet of $20. Turn and river, the bet doubles to 40 and 40. At the end of the hand, turn your cards up, especially if you don't know what you're doing, right? Turn them up, maybe somebody can help you. And what'll happen is the best high hand gets half the pot, the best low hand gets the other half of the pot. Now there are gonna be times where you have both. You might have the nut low and you might have the nut flush. That can happen, we call that nut nut. Okay, so let's talk about some hands that you really wanna start with. Some the, We'll call them the top starting hands. And typically the best hands are, the, strong, the strongest group of hands are powerful two-way hands. Hands like ace, ace, deuce, three, which you can see here. You've got ace, king, queen, deuce, which has some high features and some low features. Then you've got, you know, like a hand like ace, three, king, king, which has a high pair and some low features. And it's important to note that with these two-way hands, these hands, they play fine multi-way, but they play even better heads up. The chances of you getting at least half the pot when you have a little bit of low, a little bit of high increases. And now if you have position, you get one a player, you hit the right flop, you can also scoop. One of the important things to think about with all these starting hands that we're gonna talk about is, for the most part, don't leave home without an ace. That means if you're gonna play, you should have an ace. An ace is a really powerful card in this game because as I said, it's the best low card, it's also the best high card. It goes both ways. So, you know, you you, you just can hit, you, you flop an ace, it gives you the best top pair hand, you just flop three low cards, you've got the number, you've got a one essentially. So most powerful hands are going to contain an ace. There's a few hands we'll get to a little bit later that don't contain an ace that you, you can play, but you shouldn't be too excited about. Now the next group of hands we're gonna look at are powerful low hands. Obviously, you know, this goes without question. You're looking at hands, again, that contain an ace. Four babies, maybe all wheel cards, really, really nice. Um, you can make the case occasionally for playing a four card low hand without an ace, something like deuce three, four, five, deuce three, four, six. But again, you should proceed cautiously with these hands because you're gonna be an underdog to anybody that has an ace, uh, likely for low. If they have ace, deuce, ace, three, that's better than your deuce three, four, five. And on top of that, they have an ace, which means ace high beats five high. Now there are some high hands that you can play. Uh, you know, some of these include like king, queen, jack, 10, king, queen, queen, jack, four cards that are connected. Now these hands are not that great because on a lot of flops, you just have to fold. If you have king, king, queen, jack, it comes seven, three, deuce. Yeah, you have an overpair, big deal. The other guy probably has a low and he's free rolling you all the way. So you have to fold on these flops. When you play these high hand type hands, you really have to flop at least two parts high, right? Um, occasionally, obviously, you know, you flop top set. You've got king, king, jack, 10, and it comes king, eight, four. Well, you've got the nuts right now. Having said that, that doesn't mean you get too crazy, especially if there's a flush draw on board and you're multi-way. There's three, four people in the pot. You got top set. By the turn card, you could be the one in really bad shape. If the turn is a low card or if the turn is a flush card, you, you're the one that needs to catch up. So on a board like that, there's not a lot of great cards you can catch when you think about it, right? It has to be like a nine, 10, jack, queen, uh, you know, and non-heart and both the turn and river have to be that. So don't get too crazy just because you flop top set. 
these high hands can put some pressure on low draws, not as much as you could in a, in a game that you know offers pot limit or no limit betting. So again, they go down in value. They go up in value, actually, if you're playing pot limit because you can, as I said, put more pressure on. But uh, I would proceed cautiously unless you flop two parts high, one part low with these high connected hands and make sure that these are connected. You know, you don't want to be playing like, you know, eight, jack, queen, king. That's, that's just trash. Speaking of trash, uh, we're gonna talk about trash high hands, right? A lot of these big pair hands are not so good. You know, you get jack, not, jack, jack, nine, six, or you get, you know, king, king, 10, four. Uh, sure, you got a high pair, but as we mentioned before, you know, you flop a set in this game, that's not all it's cracked up to be because straights and flushes get there. You know, in, in a game like this, if a straighter, if, if a flush draw gets there, it's probably, you know, somebody's gonna have a flush if they've played all the way to the river. So these hands, there are very few situations where you can feel comfortable and play them aggressively. And with a hand like King, King, 10, four, uh, just you don't hit a lot of flops, right? Now a hand like King, King, Jack, 10, King, King, Queen, Jack, that's a much more playable hand because again, you flop, you can flop top set with a straight. You can flop top set with a straight draw. A lot of other good things can happen with that. So avoid these kind of trashy, high pair, junk, junk hands. Just because you have King, King, 10, four doesn't mean you have a hand. So obviously in a game that's titled high, low, you essentially want to start by, with a low first, right? You want these two-way hands where you, you know, you make your low and then you back into a high kind of thing where you're like, I got nut low, I got top pair, let's try to get there. I got nut low with a flush draw, let's try to make the flush. That's, you know, typically where you want to come from, right? So a trashy version of these low hands are the middling ones, right? The ones that don't have an A, something like a three, four, six, seven, you know, the five, six, seven, eight type hands. They look good, especially in Omaha high because, you know, when you hit them, you know, you, you can usually scoop the pot. However, in this game, if you play, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, for example, which is a real trash middle hand, what are you, how are you gonna scoop this pot? You know, anytime you, if it comes four, five, six, or seven, eight, nine, or six, somebody's gonna make a low, uh, or if not, somebody's gonna make a better high. So these middle cards are the ones you wanna avoid. You can play some high hands, you can play some, you, you should be playing some low hands, and you play some two-way hands, but the middle garbage hands are just that. Garbage. Now there's one specific hand combo I want to talk about and that's ace-king specifically. So we all know limit hold'em and no limit hold'em ace-king is a pretty powerful hand, right? It's not quite as powerful in Omaha high-low because you know you don't really want to make top pair type hands. In this game you want to make you know straights and flushes. If you happen to have a suited ace and a suited king with it, well that's pretty powerful now because unless somebody has the ace high flush in that same suit, you're drawing a two really powerful flushes. Now the value of an ace-king in your hand in Omaha high-low is increased when you play the hands heads up. So, uh, you know, you're multi-way, you're probably not gonna win with top pair. But if you're heads up, flopping a king on say a king four five board, when you have ace king deuce three, for example, well now you've got the low, you got top pair, and if you're up against just the low hand, like ace deuce three four, you've got them in bad shape. So uh, these two way hands do really well heads up, they do just fine multi-way, but say for example, a hand like ace king jack four, not a hand you want to play five ways, really, because, I mean, obviously, you, you know, it just, it's fine, but the ace four is not really going to do you much. However, heads up, you know, the ace four, you could back into a low that way. The high cards, the ace king jack, you can make a high. Um, there, it's probably, there's a lot of flops where it's going to be good enough to continue the river and hopefully get at least half the pot, if not the whole thing, by making the low and, and, and some sort of a high. So as a result, and you don't want to become too predictable with these ace-king hands, but generally speaking, if somebody raises, you should be three betting. If you're going to play, you know, ace-king, four-six, um, and someone's raised, you don't really want a bunch of other people in there with ace-three coming in. You want them out. So one way to do that is three bet, get it heads up with a hand that's maybe a little bit better than yours in terms of like, it's prettier, but but uh, the king is a powerful card in heads-up situations. It's a sure as hell, a sure as hell, a lot better than a nine would be. Okay, now that you have an understanding of pre-flop hands and what hands you should be playing, what hands have value, remember, don't leave home without an ace because it's a really important card. Let's talk about flop play from the perspective of multi-way pots. Now, this should be common sense to you by now, but obviously the more players you're facing in a pot, the better or the, the stronger your hand needs to be. Not only the stronger hand your hand needs to be, the stronger your draw should be, right? So, for example, if it's like five-way action and you started with ace, four, 10, jack, which maybe was double suited, you decided to take a flop, and the flop comes six, seven, queen. So you have ace, four, low draw. You know, no, this is definitely a fold. The odds of somebody else having ace, deuce, or ace, three are very, very high. In, it, you know, that's discounting deuce, three. And besides, with that hand, you're really not 
don't have a lot of outs to win the high. Now, ch change that hand a little bit to ace four, queen 10, and now you've got top pair. Well, maybe you can you know see at least one bet, but you don't want to get into like a big pot with a bet and a raise in front of you because again, one pair of hands just rarely ever hold up, especially in multi-weight pots. Now, if you're in heads up situations, you are going to want to play with any sort of situation that you're that you got like a two-way hand you very rarely want to fold right because your opponent could have um a one-way hand like all four low cards or you know vice versa that all four high it's very difficult for him to have a hand so strong that he beats you for high and he beats you for low so if you've got any sort of a high and any sort of a low in a heads up pot you should probably continue all the way to the river unless things get really ugly for you now one other consideration you need to think about on these flops turns and rivers really is you don't want to overplay like nut low draws, right? So, you know, just because you have the nut low draw, especially in a multi-way pot, doesn't mean you have a very good hand, especially if you don't even have the low yet. And I'm going to take that a stretch further. And even sometimes when you actually flop the nuts, the nut low, you don't want to be raising. Because especially if it looks like, for example, a flop is six, seven, eight, and you have ace, deuce, queen, queen. Okay, pretty good hand, right? You've got a pair of queens, you've got the nut low. Well, if it goes bet raise in front of you and there's two spades, Someone else probably might have the ace-deuce, very good chance of that, and somebody may have a straight already, making your queens null and void. So you don't want to overplay these situations, even though you're guaranteed almost to get some of the pot, unless an ace or a deuce counterfeits you, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Hey, you know what? Let's talk about it now. Counterfeit would mean six, seven, eight flop. If the turn is a deuce, you know, you had nut low with ace-deuce, right? Not anymore, right? Now you have an eight low, and someone else with an ace and a three, they could have a seven low, so they beat you. So in these kind of situations, you're basically getting like anti-free roll. And if somebody else has ace-deuce, you're going to get what's called quarter, which means half the pot is going to high and you're going to get half of a half, which is a quarter for the low. So you don't want to overplay these naked low draws, especially if they're not there. I talked about a nut low where you already flopped it. But I mean, if it comes like eight, seven queen and, and you have ace-deuce, six, six, Sure, you know, you, you want to see the turn, you want to, you, want, you want to continue to play in the hand, but you shouldn't be overly excited about it, you shouldn't be the one betting and raising because A, you don't have anything yet, and B, even if you make your hand, you may be drawing to just a quarter of the pot. So now, while I said you don't want to like overplay these one-way hands where you just have nut low draw or, you know, you flop top two pair when there's two low, low cards out there, you don't want to overplay those situations. The hands you do want to get, you know, maniac aggro with you know are these powerful hands that are, are already there for half and free rolling for high maybe so for example you have ace deuce four jack with nut hearts flop is three five eight with two hearts so now you're in great shape you've got the nut low you've also got what's called an, an, an uncounterfeitable low because even if an ace or a deuce comes well you've got a backup right if the ace comes you use the deuce four for the nut low well, if the deuce comes, you use the ace four and you've got the nut low. Also, you've got straight draw with that. You've got the nut flush draw. So even if you're getting quartered at the moment because somebody else has ace deuce and you don't have a pair, you have so many great cards that can, you know, get you three quarters or scoop you the pot. So these are the types of kind of hands where you want to play aggressively. And as a general rule, you don't want to slow play too much in Omaha high low, right? Especially with the high hands. Like if you flop, if it comes too high and it's like king jack seven and you flop three kings, don't get cute and just give a free card so that a turn is a six of hearts and now they have like nut low draw, straight draw, flush draw and like a million cards to beat you and you have to fade the half the deck. Bet those hands. Don't give away a lot of free cards. Um, obviously, if you know you're up really against, against really aggressive opponents in position, you can check raise to like thin the field uh, occasionally. But generally speaking, this isn't a game where you um, play too coy unless, you know, situations where it comes like queen nine nine and you have four nine somehow. You know, there you can slow play because there's no risk or no jeopardy of you losing this pot. But with high hands that are made, like if you've somehow flopped, you know, if it comes 10 jack queen and you have ace king, you should just bet it. Don't like, you know, don't get too cute on the flop or, you know, in most spots in Omaha high low when you flop a strong high hand. So as I mentioned, obviously, you know, on high boards when there's two high, one low and you've got a high hand, you can be a little bit more aggressive. Now, that changes a little bit when it's actually two low cards out there. So let's say, for example, you started with a strong hand. You have ace, deuce, jack, ten. Right? Pretty good starting hand. One of the best, actually. And the flop comes ace, ten, four, giving you top two pair, aces and tens. And, you know, you got the, the four. You don't have really a low draw. But there's also two hearts on there, and you don't have any hearts. So while you have top two, what is a good card for you on the turn? Well, an ace, that gives you the nuts. Ten, basically, gives you the nuts. 
A jack gives you aces and jacks, but also fails king, queen. King or a queen could give someone aces and kings, aces and queens. Any low card gives somebody half the pot you already lost, so we're rooting for a nine, <laughs> right? If we don't improve, we're basically rooting for a nine. So you don't want to play too aggressively on a flop like this. Now, if the turn card comes clean, that's when you can put maximum pressure on. And the good news is the bet doubles on the turn, which is good for you. So you want to be tranquilo en el flopo, si? ¿sí? Eh, cuando el turno viene, <laughs> then you, you know, you, you maybe go, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? El matador. Carlos Mortensen on him and just start betting and raising. Okay, that's enough of the Spanish puns. Apologies in advance to all those that were offended by the previous. All right, let's look at river play. Now, you're going to hear me say this in most limit games, right? Especially in heads-up situations. If you're heads-up, you don't want to typically be a hero. You also don't want the reputation of being a guy who makes big laydowns because if you become that guy, people are going to take more shots at you. And when you make statistically wrong folds, it's a travesty. I mean, it... If you, if you were getting 8-1 to one and folded because you were pretty sure the guy had it and he didn't and he was bluffing, it's going to take you a long time to earn those chips back. So for the most part, especially in the early stages, unless you have really good reads in your opponents, you definitely want to, when you get to the river, call, especially in heads-up pots, if you have a two-way hand, for example. If you've got, even if you have a bad low, let's say you missed your high flush draw and you end up with like some goofy like ace-8 for low, which is junk, right? Well, you know, you pretty much have to hope now that the guy had a high hand and you backed him to low and you get half the pot. Now, the math basically dictates for the most part that if you got any piece of the low, any, if you have a two-way hand, a low and a pair, for the most part, you're going to have to pay off in these heads-up situations. Multi-way, there's certainly situations where you can make some really good laydowns knowing that, like, okay, this hand can never be good. Like, if you know, say you're playing with a real tight player, it goes bet, raise, call, and you have second at low and, you know, middle pair. One of these guys got the nut low. You can safely throw away a hand like that. The other thing I want you to consider too is in these multi-way spots, and multi-way is simply as many as you know, three people, basically, three or four players. You know, Depending on what stakes you play, if you play low stakes, you might have seven or eight players to flop. Typically high stakes, three, four-handed is considered multi-way. Now, in these situations, uh, if you have the nut low, don't overplay this. Like, you know, you don't necessarily, sometimes you don't even want to bet. Like if there was a lot of action on the flop in the turn and you all you have on the river is nut low and someone bets in front of you, Typically, you don't want to raise, right? Because what are you raising for? You raise, the guy either has a high that he's betting or he has a nut low with maybe something else. So you're not going to be able to get three quarters of the pot. There are some tricky situations where you may want to move a guy off a hand. So let's say you ju you have nut low and just like top pair, but it doesn't look like top pair is enough, two other players behind it. Guy bets in front of you and you think, okay, this guy's got ace deuce, pretty sure, but he might not have anything else with it. You might want to raise there, knock the other guys out. Now you go from getting a quarter of the pot that you were going to split with this guy because somebody else had a better hand that folded, and you get three quarters of the pot because you get half of the pot for the hide, your pair that beats him, hopefully, uh, and you also get the quarter. Sometimes there's moves that you want to make like that, but as a general rule, don't overplay not low on the river. Often uh, it's not even worth betting in position. Sometimes it goes check, check to you. You know, and your last position, you don't have to bet the nuts in this game. You're not going to get a penalty, which is stupid anyway. They do that in some of these tournaments. Okay, so hopefully that gives you enough insight to give Omaha high-low a try. Um, I would suggest if you're a beginning player, go play some low limit. Try to play conservative, play hands with an ace. You'll notice that other people are getting in there with a lot of junky hands. Don't buy in, right? Just stay chill. Like get Until you get your feet wet and you learn how to play some of the more trashy hands like you know, king, queen, deuce, three, and blah, blah, blah. Stick with the ace, ace, deuce, three. You know, the ace, deuce, king, queen, ace, deuce, three, four. Those are some beautiful hands. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. We're going to continue the series, and we're going to go over all the games so that you'll be prepared to play any tournament, any time, any, any, any stranger who comes to town is with a bunch of money, and he throws it on the table and said, you know, looking for action? You say, you know, yes, I'm ready to play. Let's go. Gamble. I did it again. I was going to stop, too. I was just about to stop, and then I had to do the Spanish thing at the end. Again, apologies for those offended. See you guys next time.